In this video, I'm going to run through the techniques, software and free software that you can use to resize your images. We'll look at my recommended sizes and settings for various social media platforms and what I consider to be most appropriate for your website. After spending hours planning and styling your shot, getting the lighting just right and adding the final touches in post-production, the next step is to upload your images to your online portfolio or social media. Part of this process is resizing your images. As camera megapixel sizes steadily increase with advancing technology, some images can be upwards of 600 megabytes on a flattened TIFF. So there is of course a need to reduce file sizes for website display, or they would take many minutes to load one image. The terms image size and file size are easily confused, but it's important to understand the difference. Image size refers to the dimensions of the image, the width and the height, and is measured in pixels. File size refers to the amount of space an image takes up as data on your computer, hard drive or memory card. This is measured in kilobytes, megabytes or gigabytes. The objective for images being displayed on your website is for them to look good but to be low in file size for quicker loading on a page. Regardless of what software you're using to resize your images, there are a few key things you'll need to adjust to change the image and file size. Here are the key points you need to consider when it comes to reducing the file size of an image. File format. The first is file format. Most websites and social media platforms accept JPEG, PNG or GIF files, though JPEG is the most common across the web as it provides high quality and relative low file sizes. A new format for web images is WebP, although this hasn't been adopted widely yet, but does show promise for even smaller file sizes and quicker loading speeds in the future. Image size. The recommended image size for web use is largely dependent on where and how they are going to be displayed and is often between 1000 and 2500 pixels on the longest edge. While the recommended file size should be no more than a few hundred kilobytes. Keep in mind where the image will be used and what size container it will be placed in. That's the area that it will take up on the page within its surrounding border. Adding images that are too large may negatively impact the load speed of your website, but adding images that are too small will result in a fuzzy looking mess. It's also worth considering your target audience and the devices that they may be using to view your images. For example, many art directors, graphic designers and ad agencies may be using 30 inch 4K monitors, and even some home users have 4K iMac screens. Even the top end iPads are nearly 3K resolution. As my target audience are likely to be viewing on these higher resolution screens, I opt for 2,500 pixels wide or 2,000 pixels high images for uploading to my website. At that resolution, I can maintain reasonable data sizes, but high enough visual quality on 4K monitors. DPI and color profiles. DPI or PPI, which means dots per inch and pixels per inch, often add confusion for people resizing their images. But these do not influence the web display of an image. They are only relevant when printing images as the printing devices read the information of how many dots or pixels to put down for every inch of paper. With web-based images, you only really need to concern yourself with the total pixel dimensions. For colour profiles, I recommend sticking to the sRGB colour space for using images online. Resizing in Photoshop. So let's take a look at some options on how to resize your images for web and social media. For Photoshop, it can be done in just a few simple steps. One, 
image size. To start, you'll need to change the image size. To do this, go to Image, Image Size. Once you've changed the width, height, resolution and resample settings, you can see the new image size at the top of the dialog box. Click OK. I explain in detail the resampling options in the class on Carl Taylor Education, but if you prefer, you can just change them to see the results live. Next, number two, export. Once you've resized your images, go to File, Export, and here you can choose either Export As or Save for Web. The Save for Web is the method many users may already be familiar with, but Adobe also introduced the Export As feature in Photoshop CC in 2015. For those unfamiliar with either way, both allow you to do basically the same thing, though the newer Export As option does have a few extra features. Here I'll explain how to resize images using the Export As feature. Start by selecting your format, PNG, JPEG or GIF. Next, select the image quality. The higher the quality, the larger the file size. Here you'll have to decide whether you want to prioritize reduced file size or higher image quality and find a balance between the two. Remember, if you keep resaving from a JPEG, you can run into image quality problems. So it's advisable to make your high quality JPEG from a non-compressed image. If you skipped step one, you can also change the dimensions of your image and the resample settings here as well. Export As also allows you to adjust the canvas size of your images. This is something you can't do with the Save for Web option. Next, you can choose whether to embed the metadata of the image and what color space you'd like. Once you've changed the relevant settings, all that's left to do is click Export, select where you'd like to save the image to, and click Save. Remember, you can use the preview window to see how each adjustment influences the overall image. This can be particularly useful when adjusting the quality. You can also see the image size on the left-hand side of the dialog box, along with the file type and image dimensions. This updates as you make changes and is very useful if you're aiming to get your images down to a particular file size. It's also worth noting that this process could be automated using actions so that you can batch process lots of images. We cover creating actions on Carl Taylor Education. Resizing in Lightroom. Once you've made the necessary adjustments to the image that you want to upload, go to File, Export. This will open your images in the export window where you'll see custom options down the right hand side of the window each of which cover similar processes to those you would have gone through using Photoshop. Previously, exporting images in Lightroom opened a new dialog box where you could specify a number of customizations, including export location, file naming, file settings, image sizing, output sharpening, metadata and watermarking, and post-processing. In the newer versions of Lightroom, the export function is much simpler. To export your image, go to File, Export. This will open up a new window where you can select the file type, dimensions and quality. You can also choose from further options which include the metadata, file naming, output, sharpening and colour space. Once you've made the desired changes, click Export Photo. Choose the file destination where you want to save the image and click Export. If you're resizing images to a certain size, you can see the file output size at the bottom left of the window. Resizing using other software and free software. Luminar is a popular editing tool for photographers and unlike Adobe software, it is available for a one-off fee. Developed by Skylum, Luminar is a bit of a mix between Photoshop and Lightroom, allowing you to work with layers and masks while also offering a number of filters and preset adjustments. To resize images, go to File, Export. This will open a dialog box where you can name your image and select the file destination. You can then select Low, Medium or High Sharpening or None. 
To resize the image, select which option you would like to change from the Resize drop-down menu and enter the new dimensions accordingly. Then select the color space, format and quality you want. Once done, click Save. GIMP is a free photo open source editing software considered by many to be a good alternative to Photoshop or Lightroom for those wanting to make adjustments to their images. Although it doesn't offer nearly as many features as Photoshop, it does offer an impressive range of tools, though it does come with a steep learning curve. To start, go to Image, Image Scale. This is where you would change the width and height of the image. Once done, click Scale. Next, go to File, Export As. This brings up the Export Image dialog box. Here, you can set what you want the file name to be and where you want to save it. You can also choose the file format by clicking Select File Type, then clicking Export. This will bring up another dialog box where depending on what your file format is, you are able to make the adjustments such as the quality of your image and what metadata you want to include. To finish, click Export. These are just a few of the softwares you can use to prepare your images for web. Of course, you can also use your camera editing software too. Most camera manufacturers offer a free photo editing software which will offer basic features for this. Regardless of which one you use, the key thing to remember is finding the right balance between the file size and the quality of the image. If you're looking to resize your images for print, you can find the techniques that I use to enhance reproduction quality in this video here on carltaylereducation.com. Resizing for social media. So what about social media? Many photographers use Facebook, Instagram and other platforms to promote themselves and they all have recommended pixel dimensions. For Facebook, it's 2049 pixels on the longest edge. On Instagram, it's a paltry 1200 pixels, but here's a little secret. I don't resize my images for these platforms and they look perfectly fine. I simply use the same 2,500 pixel wide images that I created for my website, and then I upload these directly to Instagram or Facebook. Why? Well, time is the main criteria, and to be honest, I haven't noticed any difference when I've tested using the specified sizes compared to my own. These platforms will automatically downsize the images and compress them regardless of whether you use the recommended sizes or not. In next week's video, I'll be looking at how to make your images pop for Instagram. Thanks for watching. Get my completely free photography course with no sign up required. You can also access our free 90 page ebook. Just click the link or go to carltaylereducation.com.